So you wanna buy a house, but your credit is terrible. And that's what you say every time someone asks you, so you remain content with the excuse and go about your day. Well, what if I told you that buying a house with bad credit isn't as impossible as it would seem? Wouldn't believe me, I bet. Well, stick around and I'll change your mind. Not only is buying a home incredibly overwhelming, so is the thought of your bad credit limiting you from your goals as a homeowner. It's not hard to blemish your credit score, whether it happened during your youth or you didn't grasp the idea behind a credit card after racking thousands of dollars on it and never paying it off. Getting a mortgage won't be easy, but I'm going to be optimistic and share some knowledge about the possibilities in case you didn't know already. Oh, and before I forget, don't forget to do your thing below because it helps me help you and sharing is caring. Before I hop into the nitty gritty of this video, let me first break down what a bad credit score is. After doing some more digging on the big three credit bureaus, your FICO score is based on these factors. Credit history, new credit, type of credit, payment history, and the amount owed. With all that in mind, you will be graded from 300 to an 850 credit score. Since that range is incredibly large in terms of your actual credit score, I'll break it down in increments to give you an even better idea. If your credit score is 800 to 850, you'll most likely be approved for the best terms possible and you can give yourself a nice pat on the back for building your credit up to that point. We'll call this group excellent. 720 to 799, you're still awesome, and I highly suggest you pat yourself on the back too. This group will be known as very good. You'll get a great rate and numerous options for your loan. We'll call this next one good. 620 to 719, you're still good, but at this point you could find yourself paying a slightly higher interest rate based on your credit history. 580 to 619, we'll call this group fair. You can still be pre-approved for an FHA loan, but you will most likely be required to have less debt and be expected to pay a higher interest rate. Last but not least, we have anything under 580 credit score to be considered as poor. It's not a very good name because that doesn't mean you're poor, you just may have not made the best financial decisions along the way. And that's okay, because it's about how you rebound from the situation and not just accept the fact that you won't ever be able to own a home. That was beautiful. A lot of potential borrowers assume that credit score is the one and only tell-all to whether or not you'll get pre-approved for a mortgage. But in reality, there's a few other factors such as your down payment amount, income and assets, debt to income ratio, work history, and if you're having a co-signer hop on that loan with you or not. On top of that, you could get your hands on some assistance to help the home buying process a little easier. Some of these programs include Home Possible and Home Ready. Home Path, Employee Assistance, Mortgage Credit Certificate, depending on your state and local offerings, along with nonprofit and governmental grants. The increments I mentioned earlier are displayed just like I said on numerous sources across the internet. And even for me, at a glance, I think a 580 credit score seems to be the lowest any program can go, so I guess I'll just hold off longer. I don't blame you because at the end of the day, the majority of these sources are mortgage lenders and they don't want to take on the extra risk of someone with a low credit score. So they hardly advertise the true possibilities. Let's take a look at the FHA loan real quick. This government backed loan that's known to be a 580 credit minimum with 3.5% down is oftentimes the go-to for first time home buyers. But what a lot of people don't know is you can secure this loan at a 500 credit score too. Granted, there is a downside and that's having to put more money on the table, but it's possible and that's all that matters. In this case, you'll find yourself having to put 10% down in a home with a credit score like that. Your interest rate will most likely be higher, but lower credit FHA borrowers tend to secure a rate significantly less than on conventional loans. There's also a non-qualified mortgage or what's known as a bank statement option you could apply for. With a 500 to 580 credit score, this option is a little more common for individuals who don't have a lot of income documentation. For example, like myself, a real estate professional, some months income is higher, some months it's lower, and I invest more money into my business instead of throwing it into my bank account. At a glance, it could appear I couldn't pay my mortgage, but in reality, my money is in numerous accounts. The pros to this method are you don't need to have amazing credit, income documentation is less stringent, and application process doesn't have you jump through any more hoops than the typical loan process. 
The biggest downside to these loans is the hardship in finding a lender that will do it. And on top of that, you can expect to pay a higher interest rate and fees. Okay, Andrew, but what about those no money down loan options? Thanks for reminding me. The USDA loans, which stands for United States Department of Agriculture, made this loan option in an attempt to increase home ownership in rural areas. USDA loans are known best for their zero down payment requirement and low rates. The downside, the needed credit score is typically a 640. This loan option is best for people who have a fair credit score, but don't have a lot of money to bring to the table, hence the zero money down feature. A big qualifier for this loan is that your income can't be more than 115% of the median household income in your area. The key word there is household, not individual. As I mentioned, the USDA is trying to increase homeownership in rural areas. So there is a limitation in the areas in which this loan will qualify. So be sure to hit the link in the description to view the USDA eligibility map to see if you can capitalize on this loan option because it would be awesome if you could. If you want to know more ways to get finance for a loan, I made videos about finance options in Michigan, importance of mortgage pre-approval, 15 year versus 30 year mortgages explained, large or small down payment, and buying a house with student loans, which can be useful for people with loans as I touch on how to get pre-approved despite the heavy debt. And I'll link all those in the description below so you can continue to strive forward toward your home ownership goals. I'm not a mortgage lender by any means, so if you have questions pertaining to mortgage options, reach out to me anytime and I'll get you in touch with a few of my preferred lenders who would be happy to assess your situation. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you got some value, give it a big ol' thumbs up, tap the subscribe button because 80 or something percent of you didn't, and tap the bell to be notified every time I come out with a new video. I'll see you next time.